Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today we're talking about purple urine bag syndrome. Yeah. It's a fascinating topic. Our listeners send in medical journal articles and case studies. Right. And um, so let's get started. Can you just give us a quick overview of what purple urine bag syndrome is? Purple urine bag syndrome. Well, it's a rare condition. Um, you see the urine bag and tubing changing color connected to a urinary catheter. The bag and tubing turn purple. But the urine itself, okay. it may not change color. So the urine bag is purple, but the urine might not be. Why does the bag turn purple then? It's because of two pigments, indigo and indorubin. Indigo is blue and indorubin is red. Okay. These pigments are metabolites of tryptophan. Tryptophan is an amino acid we get from our diet. So how does tryptophan, something we eat, turn a urine bag purple? Well, certain bacteria in the urinary tract produce enzymes, and these enzymes convert tryptophan into indoxyl. And then indoxyl is oxidized into indigo and indorubin, the pigments that make that purple hue. So it's a chain reaction. It starts with the bacteria and then tryptophan. Right. What kind of bacteria are we talking about here? I mean, can all bacteria in the urinary tract cause this? No, not all bacteria. The bacteria we usually see with purple urine bag syndrome, they produce enzymes sulfatase and phosphatase. Okay. These enzymes are needed to break down tryptophan into indoxyl. Some of the common bacteria are Providencia stewarti, Klebsiella pneumoniae, Escherichia coli, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So those bacteria are the main players. And they make those pigments that cause the purple color. Yes. But I'm guessing there are certain situations where these bacteria thrive, making it more likely to see purple urine bag syndrome. Right. So what are some risk factors? Well, the most significant risk factor is long-term indwelling catheterization. Catheters, they provide a way for bacteria to get into the urinary tract. Okay. And if it's in place for a long time, the risk of infection just increases significantly. Right. It makes sense. The catheter creates an environment where bacteria can multiply. What other factors increase the risk? Being female is another risk factor. Okay. Women are simply more prone to urinary tract infections in general, and chronic constipation can also increase the risk. Constipation. Oh. That's a bit surprising. Yeah. What's the link between constipation and the urinary tract? Well, it comes down to gut bacteria. Okay. Chronic constipation can lead to too much bacteria in the gut. These bacteria metabolize tryptophan. Okay. It may seem unrelated, but the gut microbiome can actually impact the urinary tract. So even though it's happening in the gut, it can eventually lead to purple urine bag syndrome. Exactly. Are there any other risk factors? Elderly age increases the risk. And also being hospitalized or in long-term care, older adults, their immune systems are weaker. Right. So they're more susceptible to infections. And hospitalization or long-term care often means increased exposure to bacteria and, you know, a higher chance of needing a catheter. So it's a bunch of factors together. The specific bacteria, an environment where they can grow, and a patient who's more vulnerable to infection. Right. It's really helpful to understand the whole picture. Yeah, yeah. The purple color itself isn't harmful, but it's a sign of a bigger issue. You're talking about the underlying urinary tract infection. Exactly. Purple urine bag syndrome itself is usually benign, but it often points to a urinary tract infection, which, you know, if it's not treated, can be dangerous. Well, how dangerous can an untreated UTI actually be? Well, if they're not treated, they can spread. They go from the bladder up to the kidneys. And in some cases, they can even get into the bloodstream. That can lead to sepsis, which is life-threatening. So that purple color, it's like a warning sign. Mm. So for healthcare providers, what should they do when they see a patient with purple urine bag syndrome? How do you diagnose it? Well, typically we use a combination of things. We'll look at it, observe it, and then we do lab tests. The purple color is a pretty obvious sign. But we need more to confirm the UTI, and we also want to know which bacteria is causing it. So what kind of testing is done? A urine analysis is usually the first step. Okay. This test can show signs of infection, like white blood cells or nitrates in the urine. Then, to identify the exact bacteria, we do a urine culture. So it's more than just looking for the purple color. Right. You're looking for what's causing it. Makes sense. Exactly. What's the usual approach for purple urine bag syndrome? The main focus is treating that underlying UTI that usually involves antibiotics. Okay. And the specific antibiotic is chosen based on what we find in the urine culture. So you're not just trying to get rid of the purple color. You're going after the root cause. Exactly. Are there other parts of the treatment? Yeah. Changing the catheter is really important. Often the catheter itself is the source of the infection. Oh, okay. So replacing it with a new sterile one, that helps get rid of that source. And of course, it gets rid of that discolored bag, too. That makes sense. 
getting rid of the infected catheter will stop the infection from spreading. Now, what about prevention? Can we prevent purple urine bag syndrome from even happening? Prevention is always the best way to go. Now, we can't completely eliminate the risk, but there are things healthcare providers and patients can do. This is really valuable for our listeners. What are some of those preventative measures? Well, first, whenever possible, minimize catheter use. If a catheter isn't absolutely necessary, it's best to avoid it. And if it is needed, try to limit how long it's in place. The longer it's there, the higher the risk of infection. So reducing the chance of bacteria getting into the urinary tract in the first place. Exactly. What else can we do? Hygiene during catheter care is super important. Like proper hand washing before and after touching the catheter, cleaning the area around where it goes in, and making sure the drainage bag is kept lower than the bladder so urine doesn't flow back up. These hygiene practices help prevent bacteria getting in. It sounds like these practices are simple, but they can really help prevent infection. Are there any other things to keep in mind? Yeah, managing other conditions that might contribute to purple urine bag syndrome is important. We talked yeah. about constipation, right? Right. And how it can lead to an overgrowth of certain bacteria in the gut. Addressing that can help reduce the risk of purple urine bag syndrome. And another thing is hydration. Drinking plenty of fluids helps flush out bacteria. So it's a multi-pronged approach. Minimizing catheter use, keeping things clean, managing those other conditions, and staying hydrated. Yeah. All of these can help prevent purple urine bag syndrome. It sounds like we've covered a lot today, from the science behind it to the diagnosis, treatment, and prevention. We have. And it shows how important it is to pay attention to those little signs. You know, they can point to something bigger. Absolutely. Educating patients about the causes, the symptoms, and the treatment options, that can really help. It empowers them, and it can lessen their anxiety. What are the key takeaways for our listeners? Well, the main thing to remember is that even though purple urine bag syndrome is visually striking and can be worrying, it's usually benign. However, it's a sign of a UTI. If healthcare providers understand the causes, recognize the signs, and use the right prevention and treatment strategies, they can protect their patients. That's a great point. Don't just focus on the purple, focus on what's causing it. Great advice. It's been a really informative deep dive into couple year and bag syndrome. Thank you so much for being here today. It was my pleasure. And to our listeners, thank you for joining us on the deep dive. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section.